Maybe we struggle a lot to look beyond the present hardships. This passage, you know, would invite us to consider where our hope truly anchored. Welcome back to our Sunday Online Exhortation. Today's message will give an inspiration, encouragement and motivation to everyone. Stay tuned in our worship song, short exhortation, scripture reading and the highlight of the message. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and click the notification button for you to be notified always for the next video to be uploaded. Stay connected and God bless everyone. itself also will be delivered from the bandage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, groan within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved and this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. May God bless upon the reading of His word. Hello, brother and sister in Christ. Have a wonderful day. Let us continue to put our trust in Christ alone. Do not lose heart, but be strong in the Lord during this ongoing crisis. I will continue to read the passage from the book of Romans, chapter 8, from verses 26 to 30 in New King James Version. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we don't know what we should pray for as we owe. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. Now, he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose, for whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be confirmed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He predestined, this He also called, whom He called, this he also justified, and whom he justified. This he also glorified. May God bless upon the reading of his word. Think about suffering for a moment. None of us wants to suffer. It's not wrong for us to feel this way. When we think about suffering, it seems like it would only end up being our hope. But in this passage, this kind of suffering actually further and strengthens our hope instead of suppressing it. Once again, let us welcome Brother Francis Bustos to share to us about the future glory that could not be compared with the present suffering that we are experiencing today. God bless everyone. 
have a good and blessful Sunday to all. Hope and pray that everyone is fine and in good condition by the grace of God. Welcome once again to our Sunday online exhortation. Let us continue to put our trust and our hope in Christ alone. Don't give up the faith that we have started in Christ Jesus. Even in the midst of this turmoil, in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this crisis. Thank you very much, uh, Jarcy Gabriel and Gwyneth Marie Bustos, my nephew and niece, for leading us the worship song. Very nice message in song. It's wonderful to praise our King of Kings, praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. Amen? Praise God. Let us continue to worship the Lord in His Spirit and in truth. Thank you also to Sister Glaisa Bacanto Guadalupe and Brother Rani Godoy for the scripture reading and for the overview of the passage. God bless you together with your family. At this time, we have to know that the world in which we live is a fallen world, a place of sufferings, hardships, and trials. There are many heartaches and problems, a life of difficulties and sickness a season of disappointments and death and even this time I will be sharing that in the midst of this present suffering there is still hope wherein many people losing their faith and about to give up this is my encouragement for all of you do not give up the title of my topic for today is future glory in the present suffering future glory in the present suffering and in Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 25, our text for today, as what you have read together with the Sister Glaisa and Brother Rani. As we look at the passage from Romans chapter 8, verse 18, Paul jumps off this section by addressing present suffering to a future glory that will be revealed to us. He puts circumstances side by side with a future hope for us to compare. Notice he does not dismiss the sufferings in this world and in the hardship we face because of sin's presence and the corruption of what is good. Paul constantly points us forward to what we can hope for in Christ and how God is at work through the Holy Spirit and His wisdom. Maybe we struggle a lot to look beyond the present hardship. This passage, you know, would invite us to consider where our hope truly anchored. This suffering that we are encountering on this present time could be the challenges that are part of life in this perishing world. This message would invite us to be real about the suffering and circumstances. In the passage, Paul has challenges about living in this perishing world. There are three important things that we have to face suffering in life. There are three important things that we should know that we have to face suffering in life. Number one, compare our present suffering with the future glory. Compare our present suffering with the future glory. When we suffer, we have to pause for a moment. Let's evaluate and we should compare our sufferings with the future glory if we know about it and as what we have read before from the scripture in Romans chapter 8 verses 18 to 25 with sister Glaisa the passage says that what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory that he will reveal to us later because all creation is waiting eagerly for the future day when God will reveal who his children really are let us remember that Against its will, all creation was subjected to God's curse. But with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. For we know that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of glory or of future glory for we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering 
we too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as His adopted sons and daughters, including the new bodies He has promised us. We were given this hope when we were saved. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently with confidence and hope. Therefore, this present suffering is just a temporary, because remember that, like this planet Earth is also temporary. That's why Paul encourages us to look up and look ahead and contemplate at the incomparable glory that is to come for God's children. Amen? Any kind of worse sufferings could not be compared to the future glory to come. Paul knew that what he's talking about for he has suffered much more than us. Meaning, in the middle of this suffering, we have to endure and to wait patiently with confidence in our hearts with that future glory that awaits for us. Amen? Amen. Number two, Throughout present suffering, rely in the Spirit. Throughout present suffering, rely in the Spirit. When we suffer, we should not forget to lean on the work of the Spirit in our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives. Again, let us extract from the scripture in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 27, as Brother Rani was reading it. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groaning that cannot be expressed in words. I experienced that many, many times. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Therefore, there is no condition more common than feeling unable to pray when we are suffering greatly. The Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groans that words can express. These are groans without words. There is a special ministry of the Spirit to take our stumbling, sometimes silent, somewhat fragile, sometimes useless prayers, and turn them into intercession that storms heaven's gates. Let us lean on the Spirit. Ask Him for help, for He is our helper. Let us rely in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Number three, all over this present suffering, God has a purpose. All over this present suffering, God has a purpose. When we suffer, we should remind ourselves of the purpose that God has for us, as what it says in Romans chapter 8, verses 28 to 30. Because we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. Amen? For God knew His people in advance, and He chose them to become like His Son, so that His Son, Jesus Christ, would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, and having chosen them, He called them to come to Him. And having called them, He gave them the right standing with Himself. He gave them His glory. Remember this. He gave them His glory. Therefore, there is no worse feeling when we are suffering than that suffering has no point or no purpose. Note that Paul was not saying that the suffering feels good. Or even God feels close in something always. But he was saying that there is an unshakable purpose. This is all certain, so definite. It has to remind ourselves then of the overall purpose of God. Those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Let us remember that statement. Let us continue to pray that God will strengthen us for more with this suffering that we are facing today. Remember this, that this coronavirus is nothing compared to the future glory that awaits for us. Because God is our healer, God is our strength, 
God is our joy in the middle of sorrow, and God is our Savior and King in the middle of turmoil. Let us put always our trust to our living God. Again, let us put always our trust to our living God because He is in control forever. Amen. Are you blessed with the message for today? Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, the most gracious and loving God, thank you for your message today. Strengthen us in our walk with you every day. This suffering that we are experiencing today could not be compared to the future glory that will be revealed to us. Throughout this suffering, Lord, we should rely in your Spirit, because all over this present suffering, you have great purposes for all of us. Be with us throughout this suffering because we believe that you are the God who is in control for everything. You are at work of what's happening in the world today. We are praying, Lord, for your comfort, your protection, your covering, your healing, and your salvation. All of this we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, everybody would say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for watching our Sunday online exhortation. Until next incitement from the Word of God. Have a blessed Sunday and God bless everyone. Thank you very much for watching the Sunday online exhortation. Please subscribe, click the notification button and share. Stay connected for more inspiring, motivating and encouraging videos to come. Have a wonderful Sunday and God bless everyone.